All right, if you need a little help with your quiz review, I am here for you. Okay, the first one I have a star next to is about movie show times. We want to write the conjecture that describes the pattern, and then we want to use that conjecture to find the next term in the sequence. So, based on your observations, you can come up with a conjecture. Remember, conjecture is the pattern that's occurring. So, if you can notice, to get from 9.45 to 11, we'd have to add an hour and 15 minutes. I'm just going to write it as 1.15. Um, to get to 11 to 12.15, we have to add an hour and 15 minutes. And to get from 12.15 to 1.30, we have to add an hour and 15 minutes. So your conjecture can be something like, you know, a new movie plays every hour and 15 minutes past the time that the previous movie started. So your conjecture is just your conclusion based on the observations. And once you have your conjecture, just to find the next term in the series, in the sequence, every movie, a movie is played every hour and 15 minutes, so an hour and 15 minutes past our last term would be adding an hour, which would make it 2 o'clock, and 15 minutes, which would be 45. So an hour and 15 minutes later is 2.45 p.m. All right, number three, give a counterexample for each of the following. If a flower is red, then it is a rose. Remember, a counterexample proves that your conditional or that your statement is false. So it's just a simple example to prove that this hypothesis and conclusion is not always true. So we have to find a flower that is red that doesn't mean it's a rose. So I mean, I don't know a whole bunch of flowers, but hopefully you can come up with a flower that's red, like a tulip, that works. Uh, so if a flower is red, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a rose. So my counterexample is a tulip. All right, number five, write the following in if-then form, and then give the converse, inverse, and contrapositive. All kids like cartoons. So remember, if-then form, that is your conditional. We need to identify a P and then a Q. We need to make this an if-then statement. So what I would say is if someone is a, is a kid, then he or she likes cartoons. All right, and remember your converse. What can you do in your converse shoes? You can do a backflip or you can, you can do the reverse. So you flip the original conditional. Instead of P, then Q, we have Q, then P. So Instead of saying someone is a kid first, we're going to say Q first, if someone likes cartoons. And then our P, someone being a kid. So it should read, if someone likes cartoons, then he or she is a kid. Remember in that case, it would not have made sense for me to say, if he or she likes, a car likes cartoons, then someone is a kid. It just doesn't, the syntax isn't quite right there. So we want it to make sense when we read it. All right, the inverse, the opposite of in is out. Uh, insert a not, insert a negative. So the inverse means we're just negating the hypothesis and conclusion. So we're going to take the opposite of our hypothesis and then conclude with the opposite of our conclusion. So instead of someone being a kid, someone's now an adult or not a kid. And instead of liking cartoons, they don't like cartoons. So if someone is not a kid, then he or she does not like cartoons. And then the contrapositive. Big long word, we're going to do everything to it. So instead of saying P then Q, we're going to flip it. We're going to flip our P and Q, and then we're going to negate both our P and Q. So if someone is a kid, then he or she likes cartoons. Flip it. If someone likes cartoons, and he or she is a kid, and then negate it. So we actually can just take our converse here and negate this. So if someone does not like cartoons, then he or she is not a kid. All right, number seven, let P and Q be the following statements. P, I study every day. Q, I will get an A. Well, the whole part of putting what P means and what Q means is really null and void at this point. Because all we're looking for for each of these is the symbols. We're not looking for you to manipulate anything with the wording. We just want to manipulate the symbols. So everything that you learn with your original rules is going to be the truth. The conditional symbols for here is going to be P then Q, always P then Q. However, 
they gave us a capital P and a capital Q. So that would be the only difference because they gave us a capital P and a capital Q. So everything else should be exactly the way that we do it with the symbols. And you can look at the previous example to know the symbols. All right, let's look at number nine. We want to write an all, sum, or none statement from the following Venn diagrams. So remember, if you're reading it from the inside out, when the circle is completely surrounded by another circle, there's none left out on the outside, you can read it all. So inside out, all turtles have shells. Same thing here. Notice animals with shells is completely inside of animals. So you could say all animals with shells are considered animals. Kind of a stupid statement because it already says animals with shells. You can also go backwards and say, remember if you're going from the outside in, get rid of this. If you're reading from the outside in, you can say some. So some animals with shells are turtles. Now, just to be consistent with the way the Venn diagram is written and what I know that test makers are really looking for, when you have one circle completely surrounded by another, so you have this animals with shells that's completely surrounded by turtles, they want an all statement. So we want to stick with inside to out. All turtles have shells. Okay, and let's look at number 11. The Venn diagram on the right represents the food guests order during their visit to the carnival. Use the Venn diagram to answer question 11 to 13. How many guests ordered a hamburger? Remember, if it's just asking who ordered a hamburger, you just need to identify the circle that has hamburgers in it. Everybody in this hamburger circle, I'll use a different color for that. Everybody in this hamburger circle right here ordered a hamburger. Yes, some of them ordered hot dogs, and yes, some of them ordered pizza, and some of them ordered all three, but we want to know how many ordered hamburgers, and all of these people did. So 10, 4, 2, and 3. 10 plus 4 is 14, plus 2 is 16, plus 3 is 19. So 19 people ordered that hamburger. That's a terrible pen. There we go. Look how much fun that is. All right. Um, I think that's it, right? Yep. Okay. So you should be ready to take your quiz after you've completed this worksheet and, and you've had it checked by us or, you know, me. Um, and once you've finished your quiz, you're going to be ready to do a performance task. Make sure you know your vocabulary. You need to know conditional statements, inverse, converse, contrapositive. You need to know how to read these Venn diagrams. You need to know what a counterexample is. Um, you just have to know converse, inverse, contrapositive. This type of problem, your inductive reasoning, might be a little bit more challenging for you because you have to actually think. There are no rules I can give you in order to know how to think. So that's the only thing you should have a, ch a problem with. Um, yeah, you got to know counterexample, conditional, converse, inverse, contrapositive. So study those vocabulary and let me know when you're ready to take your quiz.